Rasulillah Wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa man wala And today Abdullah It should be easy To cover a whole bunch of chapters Even if you haven't been doing your verb charts Which I hope you have brother I've been showing you for the last year and a half. So much you got a brother gonna show you how to do them. Well, don't sit down with me. So I've yeah. been sitting down with you for the last year and a half. Yeah, let me come up with what. Ahlan wa sahlan. If you wait, if if you wait on someone else, it's gonna take you forever, man. And well, I'm I'm looking at this other computer screen I got up here, man. I was watching this guy about he talked about how to learn a language, any language, in six months. He said, and he's in China, I think he learned Chinese, but. He said that he had a friend that took typing, took Chinese typing for nine months and couldn't type. You know, she, she had to she had to do Chinese typing or she wanted to learn how to type Chinese. She did class for nine months and didn't learn. And then one night they had a presentation that was due in two days. And it had to be typed up in Chinese, some manual that had to be typed up in Chinese. She said, he said, in two days, she learned how to type Chinese. She took class for nine months and didn't learn. But when she, you know, didn't learn it good enough, you know. But in two days, she learned it and she was an expert. Why? Because she put her mind to it. She sat down. She did it. You know what I mean? And if you're not going to do that. He waiting on another guy he gonna sit down. If he was gonna sit with you, he'd have sat with you right then that day when you made the agreement with you, man. You know. So you got the chart. I broke the chart down for you. You just gotta try it, man. Let's do this. These aren't. These are this 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 chapter or these chapters. Inshallah Ta'ala, they're related to nouns. So they got charts too though. The charts that are related to the verbs are related to nouns. You know? You got no, let's do it a little bit different. You got singular. Plural. You got third person, second person, first person, male and female, male and female, right? So you could divide that like that if you want to do. And you're going to be able to have to put in pronouns in there. We'll get to it inshallah. Basically this chapter here is dealing with the signs last last week we went over the signs of a feminine verb. We said in the past tense the signs were in the past tense, the sign was a ta, a second at the end. Ta with a sakun at the end. That was a sign of a past tense verb. Right? For a female. Jalaset, dakhalat, akhalat, sharibat, whatever. Right? And in the beginning, if it had a ta, 
then it was a good sign that it was a female. It could also be a male singular, but it could also be female. Such as in here, Tuhsinu, right? Najahat, that this is really a sukun here, right? But uh, uh, it has that kasr for reading purposes. Tarqusu, Raqadat, right? Hazat, Tashtari, that ta in the beginning. These are all. Then we have Ahabat, past tense, right? Lalat, this is a sukun, but the kasr is there for reading purposes. Tuti'u, right? Ta'tani, Rakibat, and Fahimat. All those are feminine nouns we know because of the ta at the end, which is sakin, or which is definitely feminine, or the ta in the beginning, which it could be feminine or it could be second person, masculine singular, right? No problem. So we learn those two signs. This time, as we can see in all 12 of these sentences that we just went over, there's a sign of a feminine verb. Either the ta in the beginning or the ta sakin at the end. Now, if we look after that, we'll see Khadija. Tuhsinu Khadija. Right? Nahajat al mujtahida Tarkusu al dubba Raqadat al dajaja Right? We look at these four, even if we don't know what they mean, we don't know what najaha means, Tarkusu, Raqada, we don't know any of these words, Toha, Taha, or tahya, we don't know any of that. We know that these four words are feminine. This tamarbuta shows us that these four words are feminine. And what points to that is the fact that we have this ta in the beginning, this ta at the end it has a sukun on it, this ta at the beginning, and this ta at the end it has a sukun on it. Even though, like I said, both of them have the kasra for reading purposes. So Khadija, Mujtahida, Adubba, Adajaja, they're all feminine words. So therefore they're going to have a feminine noun if they're the fa'il, or a feminine adjective, or so on and so forth, which we've been discussing all of that. Then we have Hazat, Tashtari, Layla. Salma, Asugra, Al. Let's stop there. All right. This Aleph Maksura is another sign of a noun being feminine. Right? Of a noun being feminine. And just like the Tamarbuta, where we have Talha. Usama, right, Muawiyah, and other than those names, they're all feminine too. That doesn't mean they'll take a feminine noun because they are masculine, but they have they are feminine because of that tamarbuta at the end of their names, and they are memnum and asarf. So, so not everything. So for instance. If I were to describe Khadija, I would say Al Khadija, right? Uh, Mujtahida, right? Mujtahida. With a Tamarbuta, my penning let me write there for some reason. Mujtahida with a Tamarbuta. But if I were to describe Talha, I would just say Mujtahid. Why? Isn't Talha feminine? Yeah, it's, tem it's feminine in its look. But it's really a masculine name, so I'm going to call him Mujtahid, not Mujtahida. 
However, just like Khadija 2 is, and not Al Khadija, we don't have to worry about that, just say Khadija. Khadija 2 is Mamnum in a sarf, so is Talha. Right? So is Talha. So the actual maleness of Talha is going to cause us to describe him with male adjectives and use male verbs. But the feminine part of Talha's name is still going to keep us Memnum in a sarf. It doesn't take a, a kasr when it's Majroor and so on and so forth. So it's going to have some names. It's going to have some qualities that, that, are, that are shared, such as the Memnum in a sarf. And it's going to have some qualities which are, you know, still going to be male, even though it has a male look. Is that clear? I mean a female look. Is that clear? No. Layla, Selma, Asugra. These are all female names and the sign of them is the Alif Maksura. And the same thing is going to go for like Mustafa. Mustafa has and out of Maksura here. So it is feminine in his look. Well, if we say Salma Mujtahida, we're going to say Mustafa Mujtahid, right? Because it is a male. But all of the other rules that apply to Layla, Salma, Asugra, the fact that they are feminine, they're going to apply grammatically to Mustafa as well. Then we have Al Amya and Asma. Right? These two here. Amya and Asma. This here is called Aleph Mamduda. This is Maksura. And that's what you're going to find here that you got a lot of terminologies in this in this lesson maybe that might be the main issue here. Memdu this is Maksura and this is Memduda. Right? Meaning Memduda means extended. Maksura means shortened. Right? So maksura, maksura from the word qasir, short. So maksura, the alif maksura, shortened, and the alif mamduda, lengthened. Those are feminine names. If you see someone with a name that has that alif there at the end, right? So for instance, you'll see the word amrika. Right? Turkiya. They got that Aleph at the end. Those are feminine names. Those are feminine names. You see that Aleph? That is a feminine name. Amrika, Turkiya, Suriya. Right? Suriya. Feminine names. That Aleph gives it away. Right? Then you have Ta'tani, Zainab, Rakibat, Su'ad, Fahimat, Ihsan. Right? Fahimat, Ihsan. Ihsan, Su'ad, and Zainab. Those are feminine names. Their sign is they don't have one. You just have to learn them and know that they're feminine. Now we spoke before about four ways of knowing a feminine word. Right? Four ways. Do you remember what they were? Yeah. The, the, the Aleph. No. Uh, no, no, not today. Just uh uh The ta is for a, a, a noun. 
right? I mean a verb. Tamarbuta, right? Tamarbuta. And now we're going to add to that the Aleph Meksura and the Aleph Memduda, right? Now, another way to know a feminine word is it's a feminine word itself, right? It is a feminine word, such as um, mother, right? Ucht, sister. Neither one of those have the Tamar Buta or the Aleph Maksura or Aleph Mabduda. But they're, for instance, okay, Khala, Amma, they have Tamar Buta at the end. A word that is feminine, such as um and ucht, right? And there may be others that's just not in my head right now, right? Um and ucht. They're definitely feminine. And there's no discrepancy in that. Mother and sister, they are feminine. You get to grandmother and aunts, then they have the ta marbuta at the end. So you would tell by that. Jadda, grandma. Khala, Khalatun, that's aunt from the uh, mother side, Ammatun from the father side, so on and so forth. The third way, body parts in pairs. Eyes, ears, hands, elbows, knees, feet legs right whatever you got pair of and the body part is feminine and the fourth one you have to learn them right you have to learn them like earth al ard a shams the sun a nar the fire Right, so on and so forth. Right now, omen ucht, you could add to that Zainab. It depends on where you want to add it. Right, Zainab, Suad, those are only going to be female names. Or you could say, you know what, I'm going to put them in a section, you just have to learn them. It's up to you. But Zainab is only for a woman. So Ad is only for a woman, right? Ihsan is only going to be a woman's name, at least in most countries probably, right? So, and this could change from culture to culture as well. Maybe someone in Sudan, they named their son Ihsan, no problem, you know? But in some country, you know, say Egypt or somewhere, they won't. Only that's for women only, you know? Could happen. Well, Zainab is only going to be for a woman. Allahu Alam Su'ad is only going to be for a woman. Right? So you could put them under those female names, such as Um and Ukht, or you could put them under those names you have to learn. It's up to you. Anyway, these are the four ways you know that a word is feminine. Now, they only gave us today number one and number three. That's it. No, not number three. Awesome. Number one and number four. Those that you have to... Uh, depending on if you look at Zainab and Su'ad as number two or number four. Either way it goes, it doesn't matter what they gave us. We know that the Tamarbuta, the Aleph Maksura, and the Aleph Mamduda at the end of a noun is going to let us know that it is a feminine noun. Right? So if we want to look for an adjective for tawila, table, we're going to make it feminine, whatever it is, because of the tamarbuta. Right? Mustashfa. Mustashfa. Right? We're going to say. Is a 
Feminine noun. Why? Out of Maxora. Right? Hospital. Feminine. Because it has a out of Maxora. Right? Any questions about that? An <coughs> Nakira will Marifa. An Nakira will Marifa. Okay, in the sentence one, and it may help here to look at the bath uh, below a little bit, which we will, this thing here. Fid Dorj, Fid Dorj, Kitab. Dorj is drawer. Fid Dorj, Kitab. In the drawer is a book. Sakata menzilun fishari ina. Sakata meaning to fall. Menzilun is another word for bait. Fishari ina. In our street. Sa'ala rajulun an walidi. Sa'ala, he asked, Rajulun, a man asked, An Walidi, Walidi, on my father. An Walidi, my father. This ya being my father. Rakiba Sadiqi Jawadin. Jawad here means. Let me see. Okay, yeah, a type of horse. Rakiba Sadiqi, Sadiqi, my friend, rode a steed, a type of horse, right? Male horse, stud horse. Aqaba al mudarrisu tilmidhan. Aqaba to punish. Al mudarrisu, the teacher punished tilmidhan, a student. Mazaka Muhammadun Waraka. Mazaka meaning to rip up. Right? Mazaka to rip. Muhammad ripped a, pe a paper. A piece of paper, a paper, however you want to do it. Here we have two terms. Anakira will marifa. Right? Anakira will marifa. So. We've had lots of times to learn terminologies, but we've worked on concepts. And so some of these concepts are down. They're understood. So for instance, when a noun and an adjective are there, it has to agree in four things. What are they? Please. Case. Uh, uh, definite of, uh, indefinite. Okay. Nakira, a nakira. We'll just stop there for a second. A nakira will marifa. You said definite and indefinite. Al Nakira is indefinite. Al Ma'rifa is definite. From the word Ain Ra Fa. Right? I'lam Rahimakullah Anahu Yajibu at Ta'alama Arba'i Masail. Ma'rifa to Allah. Meaning Ma'rifa, knowledge or awareness. Right? All the time we say, when we talk about a verb, if it's passive, we say it is majhul. Right? Majhul, meaning unknown from the root jim ha lam, like jahil, someone who doesn't know anything. It's unknown. Right? Jahil, jahiliya, the time when they didn't know a religion. Or we say it's maruf. 
It's active. Meaning, majhul, it's passive. We don't know who did the verb, right? I always say it's ma'roof, where we know who did the verb. We got that same word here, al-ma'rifa, meaning it's known. It's known, right, because of certain factors, which we're learning in this chapter. And nakira right, means it's unknown. Nakira means unknown, indefinite, right? Like the angels, Munkar and Nakir. Munkar and Nakir. You don't know who they are when they come to you, right? You will know, but you don't know now, right? Nakira. Unknown. Munkar or Nakira, indefinite. And Ma'rifa, definite. Nakira. Al-Ma'rifa. Indefinite. Definite. Now, how could a word be definite, Abdullah? How is it so many because they had the Aleph Lamb? Is that the only <coughs> way? Let's see. Fit Durj Kitab. We translate in the da, in the drawer is a book. A Durj has out of lamb. So we say in the da, in the drawer. Kitab. Kitab doesn't have out of lamb, so it's therefore Nakira. A Durj has out of lamb, so therefore it is Ma'rifa, right? Sakata menzilun fi shari'ina. When we translate that and we say, a house fell in our street. We got two verbs here. Menzil and share. Menzil, a house fell. We don't know what it is. It's nakira. Fishari'ina in our street. Do we know what street that is? Sakata menzilun. Do we know what house fell? No. But there was a house that fell. Fishari'ina. Do we know what street it is? No. Huh? No. no. But, do we, but do we have an olive lamb? No. no. We don't have olive lamb. What we have is na. Our street. So a pronoun there, a pronoun will tell us what it is. Sa'ala rajulun an walidi. A man asked about my father. Do we know who this man is? No. Right? We came home. Our wife said, A man came today, knocked on the door, and asked about your father. Okay, the man, do we know who he was? No, he's Nakira. But Walidi, when he asked about my father, do I know who my father is? Yes. Why? Because of Alif Lam? No, because of the Ya. The Ya Mkhataba, the Damir, the pronoun. Right? Walidi, my father. So again, just like shari'ina, this pronoun at the end, this attached pronoun, will tell us that it is ma'rifa. Raqiba sadiqi jawadan. My friend rode a horse. Just for easy translation. A steed, whatever, right? <laughs> sadiqi, is it ma'rifa or nakira? Uh, Ma'rifa. Ma'rifa. Because of the Ya al mutkallam No, al mukhatab Ya al mutkallam 
right? Yeah, and Mutakalam, the one who's talking. Right? Jawadan, we don't know what that is. That's Nakira. He didn't ride the horse, he rode, he rode a horse. Aqab al Mudarras Tilmidin. The teacher punished a student. The teacher. Do we know which teacher it is? Nam. Alif Lam. Right? Alif Lam. So when we're talking, I said the teacher. We know who we're talking about. Right? Even if we don't mention his name here. Al, -al, -al Mudarris makes it Ma'rifa. Tell me then. He beat a, or he punished a student. And Mazaka Muhammadun Waraka. Now, Muhammad, there could be six Muhammads, and then we could say, well, that's not known which one. But here, we're talking about a Muhammad, right? Muhammad Mazaka Waraka. Which paper did he tear up? We don't know. It's mensub, maf'ulun bihi. It's the object of the verb. What did he tear up? He tore up a paper. But it's also nakira, right? Doesn't have alif lam. Doesn't have a pronoun attached to it to let us know. For instance, mazzaqa muhammadun warakati. My paper. Warakatuka. Your paper. Warakatuna. Our paper. Warakatuhu. His paper. Then we would know that waraka, whose it was, and it would become ma'rifa. But right now, it's just left empty. Waraka ten. He tore up a paper. Right? And this last one is leading us to the next chapter, but we'll get there. So, when we look at these, and I'm basically summarizing this bath here, right? If we were to look at every one of the nouns above in these sentences, we would see that some of them, like Kitab and Menzil, Rajul, Jawad, Tilmid, Waraka, then they don't point to anything which is specific. Specific to us. Right? That we know about. Now, maybe Muhammad, he knew what paper it was. The teacher knew what student he punished. You know, my friend knew what horse he rode, right? Uh, the the man who who asked about my father, he knew who he was, and so on and so forth, right? But we don't know who he was. So these words, right? We understand. There's any book, you know. We don't know what book was in the in the drawer. It could have been any book in the drawer. Which house fell? Could have been any house. Could have been our own house. We just heard a house fell on our street. We don't know what house it was. We don't know. Right? Any man could have asked about my dad. Could have been a friend of his. Could have been an insurance man. Could have been uh, a hit man. You know, we don't know who, who that man was. Right? It could have been any horse that he rode. It could have been any student. It could have been any kind of paper. There's not anything specific to us. Right? So, therefore, these are called Nakira. All these nouns, they're called Nakira. And then the other nouns in the sentence, right, in these sentences, such as Adurj, Shari'ina, Walidi, Sadiqi, Al Mudarris, and Muhammad, then all these point to something which we know who they are. When we talk about the drawer, our street, my father, my friend, the teacher, and Muhammad. Then we know who all the who they are, and in our mind, they're not mixed up with anything else, right? When we say Sa'ala Rajulun an Walidi, right? We knew that a man was supposed to be coming. <laughs> to tell me about my father's journeys in the war, for example, his, his war story. And we knew that a man was supposed to be coming from the insurance company, right? To tell me or to, you know, to talk about my father's insurance policy. And we knew that uh, 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 
some of his friends were in town. So which man? We don't know. It could have been any of those or even someone else. But when he asked about my father, no, nothing else came to mind except my father. When he said, in the drawer is a book, which book? I don't know. But, when, but no other drawer came to mind except that drawer. You understand? And when he said, my street, the house fell. I don't know, my house, my neighbor's house, the one across the street, the one on the corner, the one at the end of the cul-de-sac, whatever. I don't know. But I do know our street, and it didn't come to my mind the other street and the next street over in another neighborhood or anything like that. Those are called Ma'rifa. Right? Those are called Ma'rifa. Is that clear? A Nakira is a name. Is, is a noun. Which doesn't point to anything specific. Well, a ma'rifa is a noun which points to something specific. As we said, that last one, mazzaqa muhammadun waraqa, leads us to this section here. Al-alam. Al-alam. Not alim, like alamin, right? But alam, right? Alam, let's look at the examples. Ali yun fil hadiqa. Ali is in the garden. Jarrat Aisha. We know. This verb is feminine, just going over other chapters because of the ta with the sukun on it. So that verb is feminine. Aisha is a feminine noun. Why? Because of the ta marbuta. Same thing with hadika. It's a feminine noun because of the ta marbuta. Tajri as sufun baina misra wa uruba. Tajri, this is feminine. We see that ta. It could either be feminine or it could be masculine, second person singular. But we know a sofan are boats, the plural of safina. Right? Safina is one, sofan is many. Safina with a ta marbuta at the end. Right? Right, so it's a feminine noun. Sufin, whenever we talk about sufin, are a non intellectual plural, right? We talk about it in a feminine form. So we say that ta right there, right? Baina Misra wa Uruba. Between Misr, Egypt, wa Uruba, Europe. We know Uruba is feminine because it is out of there. Right? Tashtariu. Aswan, Tashtari, Aswan, Aswan, what is that? That's a name, Tashtari means to buy, Aswan is buying, but I don't know, is Aswan male or female, I don't know that name, I personally, Mustafa, the one talking right now, I don't know that name, I've never heard it before, that I can recall, Aswan, however, I know it's a feminine name, why? It's got that tie in the beginning. Because if it was Muhammad, he would be Yashtari. Not Tashtari. He would be Yashtari. Aswan is one of those feminine names like Zainab, Suad, right? So on and so forth. Right? Be Jodatil Kahwa. She's buying a great, a, 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 the best kind or a good kind of co coffee, right? And, and we know Al-Qahwa is what? Uh, 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 no, what is this? Al-Hawa. No. Tashari bi Jawdat al-Hawa. Oh, she's buying in the good. SubhanAllah. One second. <laughs> I'm trying to translate the sentence. Because it's going to help us understand the chapter. Uh, uh, 
okay, in the good air, right? In the good wind, like she's out in the good wind or whatever. London, London, this is London. Akbaru Bilad Al Angeles. London is the biggest land in England. London Angeles is England. What right? In Kiltara. There's lots of different ways to look at it. Safara Abbey Ila Demyat. I don't know where Demyat is. I'm sure it's a country. Safara Abbey Ila Demyat or a city. My dad traveled to Demyat. Now we got a lot of nouns in here, right? A lot of nouns. Demyat you would say, even though it doesn't have Alif Lam, and even if it doesn't have a uh, pronoun at the end, just like London doesn't have an Alif Lam, and it doesn't have a pronoun like K or E or who, right? We know London. When we say London, what comes to our mind? Just London, right? Nothing else, right? So this is Ma'rifa. Right? This is Ma'rifa. I don't know where my pen is at right now. Ma'rifa. Right? Ma'rifa. London is Ma'rifa. Why? Nothing else comes to mind. Dimyat. Nothing else comes to mind. Right? Uruba. Misr. None of these comes, nothing else comes to mind when I say Misr. That's it. Right? So if we read the chapter down here, the Bath below, if we look at the examples, we find that the nouns Ali, Aisha, Misr, Aruba, Aswan, London, Dimyat, right? Ali, Aisha, Misr, Aruba, Aswan, London, Demyat, right? All of them, they point to a person or a place. A specific person or a specific place which is known to us. So these nouns are Ma'arif, meaning they're Ma'rifa. Right? They're known nouns. The ones that have a strike through them up there. And if we went through the reasons for these being Ma'rifa, we've seen that every one of them is because they were caught, a person was named Samma. Right? He was named or a place <laughs> so every one of them has a name the either the person or the place that points to that specific place and signs which are for in London for instance when London comes to your mind you look you, you think of across the ocean you think of double-decker buses you think of Big Ben you think of the you know, the flag with blue with the red and white stripes on it, however it works, right? You think of that place. Oruba, you think automatically of a place. And you think of its signs. Over there is France and England and Germany. You got things. It, it pops up in your head. Ali, when I talk about Ali, right? You, you don't, We don't know Ali together. But when I talk about Abu Sumeya, we know who Abu Sumeya is. When I talk about Suhail, we know who Suhail is. When I talk about Aisha bint Abi Bakr, we know who she is. And all her signs. Right? These things, which, when I mention their name, or when I mention them, they have specific signs. Right? Specific signs. Like this name is specific to them. When your father named you Hamad or Abdullah or, or, or whatever he named you, 
then he gave you that name so that you would be known by that name. In Arabic, this is called Al Alam. The chapter title at the top Al Alam. So, a city, when we name our city Al Alam, you name your truck Betsy, whatever, old Betsy, right? Then this is an Alam, right? This is an Alam, something that you can know what it is, right? This is an Alam. So Muhammad is an Alam. Zainab is an Alam. Ruqayya, Aisha, Ali, Abdullah, Hamad, all of these are Alams. They're basically something. Like we have the word uh, Alama, right? Meaning a sign. Right? A lama. A sign. So here, al alam is from that same thing. This is what it's called. Right? That we know what that thing is by naming it. So for instance, al hawa al hawa had that is its name. The air. Right? But a sufan right a sufan or safina right when we say safina what do we think about think about a boat it's got a sail or it's got an engine whatever kind of boat we think about we think about that safina we don't think about a golf course when we say golf course we don't think about a grocery store right when we think about a uh, 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 grocery store we don't think about a uh, 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 gas station a gas station the word gas station is an alam grocery store is an alam golf course is an alam safina is an alam these are all names which tell us and help us to know what it is if you have a cat and you name it a name then that name that it's known by you got two cats. This one is Harry and this one is Skinny. I don't know. Harry, you know him. By what? By Harry. Harry is going to be his Adam. This one is known by Skinny. Skinny's going to be his Adam, his name. Like what he's known by. If you have two, two cats and a dog, which we don't have dogs unless he's for protection or something, right? For for guarding our farms or something. Then this dog, the word dog is an alam. And the word cat becomes an alam because it's distinguishing a cat from the qualities of a dog. Right? Now, what he's really talking about here is not so much talking about the word dog and the word cat and the word boat. He's more so talking about names such as Aisha, Ali, Misr, Urubba, right? Aswan, London, and Demyat. Those are specific names of specific people, right? That we know what they are and their Ma'rifa. Whether they have Alif Lam, whether they don't have Alif or Lam. The Qaida Al Alam Ismun Ma'rifa Sumya Bihi Shaksun O Makanun O Hayawan O Aishayan Akha. And Alam is an is a noun which is known. It is called by that name a person or a place or a hayawan, an animal, or anything other than that that has a name. That's called an alam. Understand? No. Are you? Al ma'ar al al ma'arif bi alif wal lam. We already know this. We don't have to go over it. If you add an alif lam to something, right, it becomes ma'rifa. 
If you have kitab and you put alaf lam on it, now if you said fit dorj, fit dorj, if we went back to our other sentence, fi ad dorj al kitab. Before it said kitaban. In the dorj is a book. Now we say fit dorj al kitab. In the drawer is the book. Putting that alaf lam on there made us know that it is ma'rifa. We already discussed that. That's one of the ways that we know something is ma'rifa. We know by alaf lam or we can know by pronouns, which is the next chapter. Ad-damir. Ad-damir is pronoun. Damir. The plural Adama'ir. Adama'ir. Pronouns. Right? And we already know what they are. Now, what we have to realize is we have two types of pronouns. And actually, there's a third type which they introduce, but it's basically a second type. All right? But we'll just talk about two right now. We have attached, muttasal, from the word wasala yasilu, to connect, to reach, and munfasal, meaning. Uh, uh, disconnected, attached, mutasal, and detached. Right? They're on their own. Right? What is a damir? What is a pronoun in English, Abdullah? What is a pronoun in English? What is a pronoun? What is the definition of a pronoun? Uh, something that's described a noun. I mean, not described a noun. Takes the place of a noun. It takes the place of a noun. Takes the, takes the place of a noun, exactly. Right? In Arabic, it's the same thing. Right? And we have them, as we said, we need to have a chart here. We, we need to have a chart. For instance, we're going to talk about detached pronouns. Munfasal. Right? Munfasal. If they're by themselves, what is he in Arabic? What is he in Arabic? Uh, I thought it was a noun. No, I'm in Arabic. I'm asking what's the defi- what's the Arabic word for he? Oh, who? Who? For she? He. He. Right? Them. Them too. Huma. No, them too. Huma. Put that Aleph on there for two. Right? That's called Aleph al Ithnain. Right? Just like in Kalimat Tan. The Aleph al Ithnain. Right? What do we do? We add the Aleph Noon. But the thing that shows the dual is the Aleph. Otherwise, when it becomes Mensub. Or Medzum, when we say Kalimata, because of something that came before it, and we drop the noon, right? You say, well, how do I know it's dual? No, you know because the Aleph Alif name, the two. If it's plural, them, we say whom. For them, here, if it's more than one here, more than two here's, we say hunna. You, singular, you, to a male, what do you say? Two. No, you, I'm talking about you, you. How do I say you, huh? I'm talking to you. How would I say the word you in Arabic to a male? Enter. 
Antuma. Let's make that. Antuma. And Antum. You guys, plural. NT. To a female. If I'm talking to a female, I say NT. If I'm talking to two females, and to ma, same thing. And tuna. Four, three or more of them that I'm talking to. Right? And tuna. And then I say, Anna. I. And I say, Nahno. And there is no dual. They will say, if you're going to use it, they will use Nahnu. Right? If you're going to make a dual. Now, what does that mean? These are our pronouns. Munfasal. These are our pronouns. I'm talking about Muhammad. Muhammad went to the store. Muhammad bought a loaf of bread. Muhammad didn't have enough money. Muhammad asked money from the person next to him. Muhammad got the money from the person next to him. Muhammad paid the cashier. Muhammad came home. No, I'm going to say Muhammad went to the store. He, he got a loaf of bread. He didn't have enough money, so he asked the cashier. He asked the person next to him, and he paid the cashier, and he came home. I'm gonna say, "Hua, hua, 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 hua." I'm not gonna continue to say Muhammad, 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 so on and so forth. These are our pronouns, which take the place. We went to the store. We bought a loaf of bread, right? These are pronouns, Munfasal, right? These are pronouns, Munfasal. Now, they're introducing new terms for what do you call this. For instance, third person. What do you call third person? You call third person al-ghaib. Like the word ghaib. Right? Al-ghaib. Right? Unknown are not here not really not here absent absent a person who is not here like for instance if you say if you were in class and I say Abdullah I'm taking attendance I say Abdullah you say here I'm here right I would mark that person ha there present right if he's not here I'd mark him ghaib not present so the third person, we call it third person in English, but in Arabic they call it al ghaib Why? Because he's not present, at least not in our conversation. He could be right next to us, but we're talking about him, and he's not in our conversation. So he's absent from the conversation, right? First person is al mutakallam Mutakallam. The one who is talking from takallama to talk. al mutakallam And the th second person is al mukhatab al mukhatab Like the word khutbah. al mukhatab the one you're talking to. Right? Mukhatab. Right? And then they'll say, well, this one, anti, is mukhataba with a ta marbuta. Al ghaiba, hiya, because it's feminine. Right? And they'll say, al mutakalli, moon, over here. Al ghaibun, al mutakhata, boon. And they'll use it for the plural and so on and so forth. Right? Mutakhata, bat. Right? Because they're feminine plural so they'll change it accordingly but the main thing is al ghaib al mukhatib and al mutakallam all that was pretty easy right no.
So the next time we're going to go over the Damir Al Muqtasab. The ones are connected. Right? Right? That's it. So we'll say, for instance, here, I'm just looking here. I'm going to get my pen different. We'll say here, this is Al Ghaib. Right? Al Ghaib. Right? Here, we'll say, here, Al Ghaiban. Here, we'll say, Al Ghaibun. Al Ghaiba. Al Ghaibatan. Al Ghaibat. Right? Al Mukhatab. Al Mukhataban. Al Mukhatabun. Al Mukhataba. Al Mukhatibatan. Al Mukhatibat. Al Mutakalim. Al Mutakalimun. It's simple. If you can memorize the chart, it's pretty, pretty simple. Right? There's another type of Munfasal. Which maybe we'll start there next week, inshallah. Right? There's another type of munfasal, which is connected to iya, like iyaka. Right? Iya. And we'll talk about that, inshallah ta'ala. We'll finish this munfasal and muttasal, inshallah, next week as much as we're able. And then after that, it is what? After that, it is Adamir uh, al-Mustatir. Those that are hidden, right, inside of the verbs or so on and so forth. And, you know, we've been through this stuff, so now it's kind of just learning some terminologies. So learning these terminologies is going to help you because, number one, al-mukhatib, al-mutakallam, al-ghaib, you'll read that somewhere. Right? You'll read that in tafsir or in hadith or something. And so it's going to help you understand what it's talking about. So it's going to be terminology, as, that you'll, that you'll, a word that you learn. Plus, you'll be able to apply it. Inshallah ta'ala. Don't wait on this dude, Abdullah, for no charts, man. You got the chart right here. You got the chart. We've been going through it. All the videos are there. All the videos are there. All the stuff we've been going over. The access to Quranic Arabic. I, I sent you the link for the blog. It's got 30, 30 lessons up there. If you follow that and you start going over those videos, you'll have it. It's about to hang up on us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.